Okay, we're going to get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our program, The Art of Drag with BOA from Canada's Drag Race. My name is Michael Magnuson. I am the new public program and outreach coordinator at the Art Gallery of Alberta. To start this program, I would like to do a land acknowledgement. The Art Gallery of Alberta is located in Edmonton, which is on Treaty 6 territory, the traditional lands of diverse Indigenous people, including the Cree, Blackfoot, Métis, Nakota Sioux, Iroquois, Dene, Inuit, and Ojibwe, Salto, and Anishinaabe. We acknowledge and extend gratitude to the many First Nations and Métis and Inuit whose footsteps have marked these lands for generations and who continue to call this place home today. This event is part of our public program in recognition of Pride Month. Our first program, which was a panel discussion with three Alberta-based artists, Nasra, Harley Mormon, and CRT, was hosted last Thursday. That video is now on our Facebook page if you would like to see it. Today, we are talking about and talking to the legendary queen, Boa, from Canada's Drag Race. Uh, we will discuss the creative side of drag and find out what inspires Boa when putting a look together. Bull will also discuss some tips and tricks you can use when getting into drag and painting your face. I will be moderating the Q&A, so if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A function and we will answer them at the end. Uh, before we get started, I want to thank our sponsors. Our public programs are made possible in part through support from the Heart and Soul Fund by EPCOR, and also big thank you to the Canada Council for the Arts. Uh, without further delay, let's bring to the stage Boa. Hello, how are you? Hi, Boa. How are you doing? I'm so good. I'm living, I'm laughing, I'm loving, excited to be here. Okay, perfect. So for people that don't know who you are, can you introduce yourself a little bit? My name is Boa, and if you have a television, you may know who I am. Um, I was on season one of Canada's Drag Race. I came in seventh place, and um, yes, I should have won, but that is not the topic today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. You know, you definitely should have won, but, you know, the topic is a little bit about drag. It's a little about creativity, and it's talking about, like, you know, your influences, what makes you excited in terms of drag, in terms of art. And so I'm just going to dive right into the questions, uh, how this Let's is going to start. I have a couple questions and then we're going to go through some of your looks and you're going to be able to, you don't know what the pictures I've selected. You're going to be able to respond to them and tell me a little bit about these looks. And then we're going to look at a video of you doing your makeup and uh, ask you some makeup tips, and then we'll end off with some more Q&A. So that's the Amazing. whole program. So I guess to get started, uh, what made you interested in drag in the first place? Oh God, I, um, I used to go out um, when I was uh, a bit younger and I remember seeing drag queens at the club performing and I loved them. I thought they were so amazing. They were so fabulous, the confidence they had, they were just so sickening and I always wanted, I wanted to do that. I wanted to be one and I used to actually have dreams about it, about mm. being a drag queen, which now is a nightmare. <laughs> um, I used to have dreams about it and uh, then I just decided one day like I wanted to start dabbling in it and then I mm -hmm. decided to move to Toronto and now we're here. Okay, cool. So what was uh, uh, what was the first time you did drag? Was that like at Halloween, like most people, or you just put on uh, some lip, lip gloss one day? Yeah, no, I started uh, playing around with makeup, and then a uh, makeup selfie challenge started popping up on Facebook where men would put makeup on and take a selfie for uh, prostate awareness, and then somebody, somebody challenged me to do it, and I was like, well, I'm gonna look pretty. So I tried. I actually felt, I followed a, a tutorial from Willem, Oh. And I did it and I was like, wow, I look pretty. And uh, <laughs> then I just started buying drag and yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Willem is very pretty. So that's probably a good tutorial to start with. Yeah. Yeah. So quick question, like what does drag mean to you? Like what's the, your definition of drag or how does it, how does it affect your life? What does it mean to me? Sorry, I guess those uh, are two questions. <laughs> Sorry. What drag means to me? Um, God weird question how do I answer that uh like the definition of drag for me is like kind of any any uh exploration or expression of, of gender anything can really be drag and mm -hmm. uh it's grown so much over the the past years that it used to be just looked at as like a man dressing as a woman mm -hmm. but now it's like a full spectrum and it's it, there's so 
there's like a million types of drag and it's just it's growing and ever evolving and it's uh such a creative art form yeah definitely yeah i want to talk touch base on like the creativity with drag a little bit with you so it is a creative art form it's like you know something that we're seeing more and more looks that are just like outrageous. They could almost be sculptures. People are painting them th their faces in such unique ways. So how has your creative style and creativity evolved as you become more of an established queen? So how have you kind of like took your creativity to the next level? Uh, it's, it's weird because I'm kind of considered alternative in my own sense. Uh, I do like to do campier drag, like when you, like what you saw on the show. I used to do a lot of really out of the box looks and, and, and concepts. Uh, I like doing comedy, mm -hmm. and I, I find that now over the last over the last year, I've I've tried to fit myself into a mold to be more um, what's the word to be more accessible to people. Um, okay. So I'm not I'm not going too crazy over the box anymore. Um, out of the box, I mean, um, especially because it's it's online drag and uh, it, we can only do so much. But that mm -hmm. being said, I still I still like to push myself. I still like to uh, um, have nice makeup, look beautiful, and uh, just be funny old me. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Okay, so let's uh, Helen, if you can move back the slide to the one that we were on. So I'm gonna start this section, and it's gonna get you to talk a little bit about your looks. And, you know, it's kind of, if you ever watch that YouTube clip where it's like, Vogue, your life and looks. So we have a huge range. Voa has not seen any of these images. We're just going to get them to react and tell the story a little bit about this look. So this first look is your promo from Canada's Drag Race. And I remember when I saw this on my computer, I screamed because it was so exciting that you were on. And, you know, what was that moment for you? How did you decide that this was going to be your promo look? So basically the theme was Queen of the North and they gave us a mood board and uh, I wanted to do something different because I thought everyone was going to kind of be dressed as the white witch from Narnia, mm -hmm. red gowns and that's that other thing. So I said, you know what, everyone knows Canada for hockey. Why not try to do like a hockey queen kind of theme? And uh, it's funny because this look really it, there was a lot of obstacles with this look uh the person I had originally make it kind of went MIA on me a couple days before I left so we had to remake it reorder all the fabric and I had to actually sit in my hotel room while on drag race finishing the outfit itself uh so that was really stressful mm. <laughs> um and that's yeah. why uh there are some questionable components about it but i actually re i redid the outfit i upgraded it for the one year mm. anniversary of canada's drag race exactly oh, how great. i wanted it to be and uh i stand by the look like it's a great concept it's fun it's camp it's me yeah and, uh, it says my name on it so yeah i love it i thought it was so creative uh, to like use the hockey neck net as a cape i thought that was just brilliant it's such a clever uh concept and it makes a lot of sense and it really did introduce you to the world, like, you know, as this like fierce queen, but also like a little bit more of a queen with like some concepts behind her. Yeah, so exactly. we're gonna move into the next look. And this look uh, was part of a challenge. And so this is so iconic for me because here you are, uh, you get this green box and then you have to make uh, a look very quickly. Can you explain the challenge and how what was your creative process with all this material trying to make this look? So, okay, so I, I brought patterns with me. Um, I know what shapes look good on me, and I brought patterns for a skirt uh, and a panty that I would wear, but I kept forgetting to mirror the fabric, and I had a bunch of this green fabric, so I kept trying to make the skirt, and I used like five yards of this fabric, like after making the skirt, and it still wasn't made, and I finally had one more panel, I said, okay, I think you just gotta do this right. And I made the skirt. I spent about four hours trying to make a wig out of yarn <laughs> that you didn't see. And um, I just remember at the end of day one, I was like, oh shit, what am I gonna do? So I I just uh, got a corset, spray painted it, let it dry overnight. And then when I got back the next day, I started ripping things up, adding things. And I just thought to put the breastplate on, why not? <laughs> and it just kind of all came together. And I yeah. <laughs> 
no it was great it was like and the judges loved it and I re- I think like audience really loved it because it was so fun and campy and great yeah. and and so like I guess like just a little bit of info like how much time do you actually have like eight hours or is it shorter like it's not you know? much no okay yeah no it seems like all these looks they're like wow like I couldn't imagine having to make anything like in that short period of time so I always commend people when they can pull off such a such a fun look and this is amazing so uh can we look at the next look for boa this is another drag look so this is another one that you had to make and so can you explain like you get these materials or what happens with this challenge yeah so we, we got metal this challenge and uh, we had to make a garment completely out of metal and I I knew the shape I wanted I knew it was something uh something fun and kind of different from what I normally do and uh yeah I I just started making this this panty and making this um making this the skirt Mm -hmm. and uh it was difficult because there was no stretch the panty so it kind of looked like a diaper okay. <laughs> and uh, I had my bra and I was like we're just gonna spray paint a bunch of stuff and, and add mm-hmm. it all together and hope it looks good and I actually felt really beautiful that runway so yeah yeah it was really amazing how like you know the 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 fabric or the materials that you use really looked great on stage and I think that's yeah. something that you can tell with you it's like you're aware of how you look on stage like you're you're making big shapes or you're making interesting looks based on like what the audience is going to see, which I think is really yeah. nice. You know, you got to have a lot of sparkle and razzle dazzle, I guess. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. Uh, let's look at the next look. Okay. So this is your entrance look. Uh, so entrance. You know, you're going on and you decide you're going to be a cow that is uh is being like taken by a UFO. What is the thought process around this? Like, you know, that is definitely a look I've never seen before. And it's one that you're known for. Why did you go this kind of like comedy route? So originally, this wasn't supposed to be an entrance look. This was just a look I had kind of conceptualized. And it's from two years ago, Missy Elliott performed at the VMAs and she did pass that Dutch as part of one of her medleys that she did. Mm -hmm. And, uh, on TV, one of her dancers was sucked up by a UFO, and I thought that was so cool because because the whole stage was was farm themed, and she was a scarecrow, and then there's a UFO coming in. I was like, I love that that farm alien kind of correlation you see in pop culture a lot. Mm-hmm. And so me and me and a friend came up with this kind of concept of of being the cow that's being sucked up by the UFO, and so yeah. finding the fabric there was like at th- this this time there was no such thing as stretch cow print fabric I went everywhere I went I looked all over Toronto I looked online I could not find it so I went to Value Village and I bought a cow costume and I had it turned into this outfit that's amazing oh my god so you're so that's something another thing about you you're very resourceful and you know it's always really interesting looking through your looks like I did last night like the influence of pop culture, you know, the resourcefulness, uh, it really does show through. I think we're going to kind of switch gears a little bit. We talked, chat a little bit about Canada's Drag Race. And now I kind of want to talk about pop culture because pop culture comes into your work a lot. You know, we see it here, but uh, if we look at the next slide, I believe we have some more pop culture references. So first off, Tell me about this look and then tell me about how pop culture kind of influences your overall aesthetic. So I, uh, I've always loved camp. I've always loved kind of 80s movie movies. I love, I love horror. Um, and we were asked to do for, this is for the tour, the Voss events tour that we did. It was movie themed. So mm-hmm. we all had to open and have our own kind of movie. And I picked Back to the Future because I really, I wanted to do this kind of look for a long time. And uh, yeah, I'm just glad it worked out. And mm-hmm. that's literally all there is to it. It's <laughs> yeah. just a simple kind of thing. Yeah, definitely. Well, it's interesting, like, you know, when you have like a character, like this character from Back to the Future, and how do you decide to drag it up? Like, you know, you can take it in so many different directions, like how to make like 
uh, this like time traveler like draggy and you definitely do that just with like the color and the shape and you know yeah, which I course. find really interesting and then if yeah. we go to the next slide we have uh, more of your pop culture love okay so <laughs> tell me a little bit about this look, this is actually a series that you made for Halloween. And I'm not sure, some people tuning in might be a little bit younger, so they might not know what the Garbage Pail Kids are. But so, tell me about this. This is a series that I've wanted to do for a few years. And um, I just, I figured this would be the perfect time because we, were, we weren't working at the time and I had a lot of time to kind of be conceptual with with images and stuff. And um, I just, yeah, a Garbage Pail Kids was around in the 90s, I want to say, or 80s. And it was a ripoff of uh, Cabbage Patch Kids, but they were made all gross. Mm -hmm. So I thought it'd be such a fun little concept to do for Halloween. And I did about four different images and everyone was was different. And so this one was Mel Melanie. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I melted half my wig and I had a little eyeball hanging off my face. And yeah, it was yeah. really cool. It was fun. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about like the pr prosthetics that you use. Like, it seems like you love prosthetics. You use them quite I often. Do. Is, do you, how do you, how do you go about making them or how do you go about getting them made or what's the process there? Uh, so it, honestly, it depends what you want to do. Like I know there, there's a company called uh, Wookie or Wookie by Cinema Secrets and they do ready to go prosthetics. This right here was, um, I just made this. It was like, it was like gelatin. It was like gelatin oh, wow. mixed with uh, some foundation and stuff, heated up, and then I just dripped it all over my face and added different colors into it. Mm -hmm. And the eyeball is from the dollar store. I cut in half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really awesome. And it's it's like you know the resourcefulness, the use of the Dollarama materials. Like that's what you got to do when you're a drag queen or an artist in general is pulling yeah. in pulling in different materials. And I think we have another photo coming up. Okay, so we have, this might be new for some people watching this, but you have an obsession with the Grinch. Can you talk to us a little bit about like, why the Grinch, why that pop, pop culture reference, and then how did you go about dragifying the Grinch? And I think we have three photos to go through. So I, uh, I'm not, okay, like I've always liked the Grinch. I don't know, it's just like an iconic Christmas character. It's always funny. I've seen that movie a million times. And uh, the way the whole Grinch thing started was I was doing a pageant. I was prepping to do uh, Miss Elemento Rico. And a friend of mine, her name is Eve 6000, she, uh, she was like, how funny would it be if like, you did it as the Grinch? Like, that would be insane. It's March. You're at a Latino bar and competing in this, this pageant. Mm -hmm. so I was like I can't do that she talked me into doing it and uh, I did the entire package as the Grinch knowing I wasn't gonna win mm -hmm. but everyone that night was talking about me and not the winner so I definitely made a statement I definitely <laughs> I definitely made an impact yeah you definitely know how to pull focus and get attention which I think is really interesting and like you know like if we look at this like the construction of the hair the construction of the garment like your prosthetics, like you are not playing around. You are definitely serving a really cool look. So that's amazing. Yeah, it was, it was fun. It was so stupid. It was, it was just ridiculous. Like we all walked out for the, the swimwear slash presentation and I was Q9, like Queen 9. And uh, mm -hmm. all the beautiful girls walked out and then me as the Grinch. It was just so ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. Did you ever think about doing this look for Drag Race? Like, did you bring it? I wanted to, but um, it's such it's such a, a notable character. Okay. It's not like, you know what I mean? It's like, there's, I think there's legalities with it. Oh, everything okay, is fair enough. Character. Yeah. But yeah, That's, I'd love to do that. Yeah, definitely. Okay, it sounds good. Yeah, it is interesting with Drag Race, like, or Candace Drag Race, like, it seems like such a whirlwind that you're on and so fast paced and you have to be so creative so often. So yeah, do you have anything else to say about your Candace Drag Race journey? I'm curious if you have any like tidbits because you're shooting season two yet. Do you have any advice for queens that are gonna be on it shortly? Uh, just be yourself, honestly. Like be yourself and then shoot your shot. Like 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 shoot first and ask questions later because this is your time to shine and you mm -hmm. literally only got one shot. So take that shot. Okay, very cool. Okay, let's see some more looks. Okay, so this is you. I believe this is after your journey on Drag Race, correct? Yeah. 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 And so 
let's talk a little bit about this look and how you went about making it. Because this is uh, so... like, I guess one of the reasons why I wanted to put this in is because like something that I've noticed is you kind of fluctuate towards glamour and then camp. And this is like really high glamour for you or like high glamour yeah. in general. Yeah, I was gonna say, I was gonna say it's like more campy. It's uh, okay. I, I like contrasting colors a lot. I really like purple and green. Um, and I had these ostrich feathers and I knew I wanted to do something big with them. So I came up with this idea with Leland, uh, one of my costume designers, and we just had this fun asymmetrical kind of glamorous uh, off to the races look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really cute. So I guess I want to go into that, like that whole process of like how you come up with a look in general. So like, is the process like you start with a sketch or do you work with designers? Like how, how do you kind of come up with uh, with the actual final product, like from, from the start to the end? Yeah, like I'll work with designers. And I also like, if I see something I like online, I'll just buy it <laughs> and I'll figure out what to do with it. Um, I'm not uh, a very good uh, sketcher. So um, I just kind of visualize it in my head and, it's, and speak to the designers about what I want. And then they come up with it, they draw mm -hmm. it out and they, then they make it. Yeah, it seems like such a collaborative process, which is really nice. Like, you know, you have it your is. person doing your hair, you do your own hair, and then, you know, you have your costume designer, you pull influences from different people. So that's really, that's really, you like, not super unique to drag, but that's like, it's so nice that drag is such a collaborative thing, because like, it really yeah. is for the, the queer and allied community. So it's nice exactly. that it's such a collaborative process. So let's see what we have next. What's next? Okay, so I had to pull this look because we are in Alberta. This is a little bit of a Western theme. What did, what made you gravitate towards this look? So this was uh, Lil Nas X's uh, Grammys look. It's a Versace cowboy outfit. And mm -hmm. I just loved it. I just thought it was so campy and so fun. And cow cowboy uh, Western style was like really in at the time. And I knew <laughs> I wanted to do it. And uh, yeah, it was just so fun. I've never seen anyone uh, do many looks that were like male to female. Mm -hmm, if that makes that's sense. So like, true. like you can, you'll see a million J Lo recreations, but very rarely do you see a drag queen wearing a little Nas X recreation. So yeah. I just loved it, and I had nothing pink, and I, I knew I wanted it, and then I collaborated with Leland again, and we came up with this look, and then I, I shot it, and uh, yeah, it's one of my favorite looks. Mm -hmm. No, it looks spectacular. And it is interesting that you say that. I wouldn't have noticed that it was a little Nas reference if you didn't point that out to me. But it it really looks beautiful. And, you know, Leland did an amazing job. And also, you know, working with photographers, it seems like something that you do often. Like, yeah. how, how, what's the process there? Because, you know, the photographers working with you, they have their own vision. Like, is there a conversation before you shoot or... I just, yeah, no, I let them know what I'm going to wear and what I'm thinking of. And then we, we get in the studio and we play around and we have fun and they tell me to do certain poses and then I do them. And yeah, <laughs> okay, it's cool. very, um, like it's both of us working together. So we yeah. both, uh, yeah. it's like, we both want a good product at the end. So we, we do a lot of testing and we do, yeah, it's, a. Uh, there's not a lot of thought into the actual photo shoots normally. Like mm -hmm. it's more like spontaneous. Yeah, exactly. And then that's when that's when the magic really happens, to be honest with you. Yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. So let's look at the next look. Okay, so I pulled this from your Facebook. This is probably like the like the one that is like a little bit outside. So this was obviously a performance and you're getting painted. We are an art gallery. So I had to pull up the one yeah. where you're getting painted. So tell me a little bit about this. This was from New Year's Eve. Uh, and I, I performed at Pitbull, and I just wanted to do a really cool, visual, fun kind of performance, and mm -hmm. I was really inspired by uh, Alexander McQueen had this on a runway one time where he had a model yeah. being painted in a dress, and I knew I wanted to be painted, and I wanted to glow and look really cool, so I came up with like, the song Toxic by Britney Spears, okay. and then I hired the dancers, and we conceptualized it all together, and uh, it really glowed that night. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it looks amazing. And it's so it's so neat that you pulled like a Alexander McQueen reference because I think yeah. that was such an iconic performance. And it's it's nice how like, you know, uh, 
you know, fashion influences drag so much and drag influences fashion so much. So it's really cool to see that relationship. Um, you know, do you want to talk a little bit about like drag and fashion or how they kind of work alongside each other? Um, well, drag is what, drag is very inspired by fashion for the, for the most part. Like you really see a lot of fashion queens, uh, on drag mm-hmm. race and on the internet. Um, and, and they're actually starting to use drag queens on runways and stuff. And you see, yeah. it's like, as drag is getting bigger, you're seeing it more and it, it, the two paths are crossing so much. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I could see you on the runway for sure. <laughs> like for that sure. would be Let's amazing. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And uh, I guess we'll look at the next slide then. Okay. So I pulled this up just because I was so impressed with like the level of paint that you have on and how beautiful it is. And so like, you know, you're painting yourself. How do you come up with this idea to go such like a beautiful neon look? But what is, what's the process? Because this is something to me, I'm just like, wow, like some painters can't paint so good on a canvas and uh, Bo is doing it on their face. <laughs> uh, this is when, this is in the winter and I was having a really hard time with, with COVID and mm. uh, basically having, um, you know, I wasn't getting anything from my career, obviously, because we mm-hmm. weren't allowed to work, basically. And so I wasn't in drag for, I was in drag like once a month. And I was like, okay, I have to start do- getting drag more. So I'm going to do it twice a week. I'm going to paint and just try to be creative. And so I sat down at my, my table and I was like, what do I want to do? And I had this this blue makeup and I was like, let's, let's just try something crazy today. So yeah. I, I just started painting myself blue and then adding different pops of color. And then I grabbed my jacket out of the out of the, the closet and I had this orange hair and I was like, ooh, I'm an alien now. Yeah, yeah that was a really cool look. Yeah, it's such a cool look. And you touched on a little bit about the pandemic. So can you talk a little bit about as a creative, how the pandemic affected you and maybe, you know, switched up your process a little bit or how, I guess like my main question is, how did the pandemic affect you? Because, you know, Drag Race was airing and then it was pandemic. And normally everyone expects the queens to tour and do all this great stuff. And there was none of that. So I'm curious. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of ruined my life. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, definitely, it was like the worst thing that could happen did happen. And mm-hmm. I didn't know how to deal with it and navigate through it. It really, really challenged me uh, in my mental health. And mm. Yeah, definitely it's just horrible. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know what else to say. Like, yeah, no, I lie. like, you know, I think it's so good that, like, you know, you're mentioning that because I think it challenged everyone's mental health and mine too. And it, it's like, it's so nice that we are coming out of it. And now you're going on tour. You're going on tour in Europe, right? Yeah. So that's really exciting. So, yeah, I guess like good things are happening. It's just like during the pandemic. It, it was a challenge on everyone. So of it's course, great yeah. that, you know, throughout the pandemic, you know, you made this wonderful look. So you were able to get some good things out of it, but definitely a, a huge challenge. So let's yeah. see what else we have here for your, for your looks. Okay, <laughs> so this I saw on Facebook and it's one of your first headshots. And it's so you're, it's your first headshot. And so tell me a little bit about being a new queen on the scene and if you have any advice for queens that are just starting out or dabbling in drag uh what what would what advice would you give to those queens or kings or performers in general Um, just find out what kind of drag you you want to do there's no right or wrong with drag you can do whatever you want uh just honestly like do it well like i like don't (laughs) don't half ass it like put your heart and soul into it it's, it's your art it's your creation and really give it your all because it can be very it can be very rewarding mm-hmm. yeah definitely yeah and another thing I, I noticed with your looks or maybe you can speak about this is like your earlier looks you were very uh glamorous and fishy and you were like you know uh you always had like a beautiful painted lip and beautiful looks and as you kind of progress, you got more campy and more fun. So can you speak a little bit about that trans, trans uh, like uh, that journey, I guess? Or is yeah. that something I'm just interpreting or is that true? At first I took myself pretty seriously and I didn't have any humor of myself. And then probably about two years in, I started loosening up and, and kind of poking fun at myself. And with that really helped me blow up and uh, really explore different 
different kind of different kinds of drag that I wanted to do. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Okay, so I have a couple more questions and then we're going to see a video of you do your makeup. We're going to get some tips and tricks for makeup from you. But I guess um, I want to, hmm, let's look at my little page. You know what? It's interesting. Actually, we were talking so freeform. I actually covered a lot of my questions. So oh, amazing. maybe, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so maybe we'll just go. Uh, pull up the video. So I want to show a quick, uh, quick clip of you doing your makeup. And then I want to kind of get you to break it down a little bit. So if we can pull up this video. So this is a Cosmo Queen video. You're doing your makeup here. Yep. And it's a little bit super speed. So this is for my music video. I conceptualized this look with my partner. I wanted to do like a cool, uh, a cool uh, color blocked, um, octopus look almost and so the makeup for it I literally just tried to figure it out the night before and uh this is actually kind of messy this isn't my best work but it looks okay I guess mm -hmm. um I just knew that I wanted I wanted big and I wanted bright and I wanted a lot of contrast and, and I, I think I did that yeah most definitely Yeah, Ooh. it's so interesting how you kind of like layer your colors. It's like you first you have a white base and then you pop on the green. Why would you put the white base on first? To make the color more bright. Um, something I started doing um, was I wouldn't set my uh, under eye highlight. Like I won't set the, the base. I just mm -hmm. go in with the shadows because it gives you a lot more payoff and it makes the, makes the shadow more pigmented and really a lot more vivid. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Is there, like, what kind of makeup brands are you using? Are you using, like, MAC, or do you use a lot I of different use, stuff? I use a lot of different stuff. I use uh, Cryolin for my for my base. I just started using Juvia's Place for my contour. I really like their contour, and mm -hmm. I'm probably going to try to start using their bases. It's also really affordable, and I really like that. Um, Highlight is just a cream uh, TV paint stick from Cryolon. Uh, shadows are, are kind of all over the place. My pigments I used uh, for that look was from Lit Cosmetics. They're uh, actually, they're in Alberta and they, they're oh, a glitter cool. company and they make really awesome glitter. Shout out to Alberta. Uh, <laughs> uh, I like, I like, uh, I have a Morphe contour that I use. I really like that. And mm -hmm. uh, then I just get a lot of filler done on my face. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. It seems like you're using a mix of like really like high products and then like more accessible products. Uh, I'm curious about like some products that are a little bit more accessible that you think like people should have or something like, you know, maybe a, a queen just starting out or, or a performer just starting out. Like what are some good drugstore products or products that you can buy that are not too expensive? Cause we all know that drag is quite expensive. Yeah. I mean, like the thing is, it's like blushes, uh, blushes are okay from the drugstore. Um, what else? I, okay. The, my gel liner I use in the video, it's from Maybelline. It's a, uh, it's just a Maybelline gel liner. It's like 13 bucks mm -hmm. and it's like so good. Like I love that. You could also use like, if you have a shimmer eyeshadow, you could use that as a highlight for your cheeks. Um, mm -hmm. But it, with, um, I find lips, like lip liners, lipsticks and uh, eyeshadows, you're going to want to just find a good brand that is really pigmented. And then mm -hmm. for your, for your foundation, highlight, contour, you also want to be full coverage full coverage so don't skip on those things but you can no. skip on the blush you know exactly. save your money on the blush yeah that's really interesting and it seems like you use a lot of glitter and a lot of fun it's like something that I've noticed is you know Trixie Mattel like uh when they were viewing all the clips they shouted out your makeup like almost every time they really loved your yeah. makeup and it you really are such a great makeup artist do you ever paint other people or how did you get so good at makeup? I honestly, like, I don't consider myself a makeup artist or a makeup queen. I just honestly just practice a lot. I know my face. I, uh, my makeup isn't even perfect as it is. Like, uh, <laughs> I, I'm so humble. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I just know my face and I've been doing it for seven years. And I mean, like if you're doing it for seven years and you still don't know how to paint your face, 
you gotta do some work, girl. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, uh, I don't good. paint other people. I don't mm-hmm. paint other people because it's completely different for me. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's completely different to paint someone than paint yourself. It's yeah, like definitely. you're working with different shapes, you're working different directions and everything. It's very stressful, and I've uh, fucked some people's faces up <laughs> by painting them. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, so it, I guess it takes seven years to get good at your own face, and you'll need that same amount of time to do someone else's or something. Who knows? It's yeah. it seems like such a challenge, um, but it's just uh, it's so remarkable to see, you know, like how your makeup has really evolved throughout the time. Um, can we just, I guess, touch a little bit more on the other aspects of drag? So, like wigs. So. You have lots of different bright cocktail wigs. Do you style them yourselves or how do you go about deciding like a wig for a look or what's the process there? So I'm really lucky. My fiance, uh, he sews and he also uh, is really great with hair. So if I need a wig done, I can be like, babe, can you do this for me? I like this look. <laughs> Um, he also, I take his opinion too. Like, if uh, he'll say this shape would look good on you, we can mm-hmm. look, let's go for it, right? I got a million wigs, and uh, and it's like, I mean, like, not everything is super, is super like down to the T. Every detail is super thought about. It's like, I have this outfit, I don't know, this wig will look good with it. Let's do this style, mm-hmm, definitely. And it seems like you know, like when you have like a roster of wigs like lined up, you can kind of pick and choose depending on your mood, uh, which is really neat. It's really helpful when you have like a partner that can do that stuff for you. Like you have your own like like crew in the background, which is really awesome. Did did they help you with any of the looks that you wore on Candace Drag Race? Yep. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, he took a he took a week off work and (laughs) sat in my kitchen and sewed for me the entire week. Wow. So I guess like the process is like, you know, like you get the list and then you're working on it. It's like you just like full steam of head. Is that how it works? It's like you have your looks and it's like you have a limited amount of time and you just have to pull pull your team together. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. That would be kind of a stressful situation. Yeah, it was very stressful. <laughs> the most stressful thing I've ever done. Yeah. And so when you got the call to be on the show, like what was like your reaction or like like you see that there's an audition for Candace Drag Race. Did you think you were going to be on it? Were you like confident? I saw the announcement and I was like kind of mad. I was annoyed. I was like, ah, oh, now I gotta apply for this. I have to get on. If I don't get on, I'm gonna be miserable about it. So I did my audition and uh, it was a very stressful process. It just took a lot of demons out of me and it made me have a lot of self doubts. And then when I got the call that I was on, I sobbed. I don't, I don't think I ever cried so hard in my entire life. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And you were also on with some of your friends and peers. Like, what was that experience showing up? And you see, like, other local queens. It was nice. It was, well, I knew, like, most of them were going to be there because you people can't talk. Get a, yeah, you know, I kind of knew, window. too. <laughs> no one knew about me, though. I knew about you, but, uh, or I Did heard, you? I heard a whisper. Well, you know what, actually not, uh, by the time your series aired. So yes, I didn't know until after it was all said and done, but yeah. Oh yeah, no, no. I yeah, mean, so- afterwards I was like, yeah, I was on, yeah, I was on the girls. <laughs> <laughs> but like le- get, gearing up to go, I didn't tell anybody. I was so good with, um, uh, with keeping it hush hush. Yeah, well, it's more surprising when you see like, you know, people that you admire, people that you like tipped in the bar or kikied with in the past on the show. And, you know, it's so great for Canada's drag scene in general to have such like a platform for our talented queens and uh, drag performers. So I think it's like so nice for us. Exactly. Mm -hmm, Definitely. Um, So I'm just looking at the... Okay, so I have a couple, I have a question in in the chat. Uh, Someone wants you to spill the tea. So this is what they're writing. Can we get the tea on the other candidates on CDR? Is Boa still in contact with them? So are you still uh, talking to the Drag drag Race girls? Yeah, yeah, we have a group chat. We we talk almost every day. We're all good friends. Uh, We all love each other. We have our drama. We we fight with each other all the time, but like we we love each other. Like yeah, when and we, he's done when a we're all, all together. It's it's hugs and kisses and shade and making okay. fun of each other. And, and That's lots great. Of have you gotten to see any of them in person? Yeah, I 
seen pretty much all of them. I have seen all of them. Um, I just saw Kiara. She was here this weekend. I spent the weekend with Jimbo. Uh, I saw Priyanka. Scarlet's in the city. Yeah. That's very cool. And you also done some collaborations with them. Like you were in Priyanka's video. Priyanka did one of your garbage pail kids. So it's so nice to see like, you know, creatives like collaborating and doing cool things together, which is awesome. Yeah. Okay, great. So I'm just going to remind people that if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. Uh, Bo is here to answer your questions. Uh, and so if you have them, like, let us know. Um, did you, when you were on the show, um, like, what was, like, one of the most iconic challenges, you know, we're talking a lot about the show, sorry, it's just so on top of my mind, because I enjoyed you so much on your season, like, yeah, uh, like, you were one of my favorite queens, and one of the things that happened is there was this challenge about, you know, uh, people, it was like an acting challenge, and it was about, you know, bachelorettes, uh, going to the bars and taking up space and you were there and you like it was very hilarious and I guess what is making me think about is a little bit about allyship so you know we have this issue where lots of you know uh you know people come to bars and they take up a lot of space uh do you have any tips and tricks for people on how they should tr treat drag queens and be a good ally in general yeah, just don't touch us. Literally, don't touch us. <laughs> if you ask if you can hug us, if you do hug us, don't don't go over the shoulders hug. Go around the, the hips because people tend to do that and they grab your wig mm -hmm. and it kind of pulls it back. And yeah, yeah, no. Us. That's all I want yeah. to say is just please don't touch me. <laughs> That's good to know. Like, I think like it's it's really nice in the queer community because like our our queens and our drag performers, our kings, are kind of like. Uh, you know, they represent us and they're out and about and there's so, such like a light in the community, but you know, they deserve respect. You have to treat them politely. So, you know, exactly. don't touch a drag queen's hair. Don't touch me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. I'm just checking the Q&A. Okay. So this is a little bit of a deeper question. Are you okay with a little bit of a deeper question? Yeah, sure. Okay. So how did you deal with some of the negative things that the queen said about you? Um, in the first episode, someone alluded to you having a little bit of a bad reputation in the Toronto drag scene. So how did you deal with that? And also I, congrats on your engagement. Oh, thank you. Well, I mean, like Juicebox said that in the confessional, so I didn't hear that. Okay. Um, I didn't realize my reputation was as bad as it was. I didn't see it. <laughs> like, you know, I think you had a reputation as being like, really fun and like the life of the party because I was you know. kind of messy because like I'm in recovery now but I was like an alcoholic for a long time mm -hmm. so I had a lot of I had a lot of crazy nights and I did a lot yeah. of shit but, but as a lot of queens do you know like the thing is like with the drag scene it's like you know there is a lot of queens that you know are having a good time and sometimes things get a little bit out of hand so some I some of them can go 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 like I don't know how they do it like I get a hangover I'm I'm on a commission for the next day and a half. Like, I'm in my yeah. bed. I, they will go for weeks, and they'll go fucking wake up the next morning and run a marathon and this, down the other thing, and I cannot. Yeah. Good good for them, because I wish I could, honestly. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And it, it is such, like, a unique profession, because, like, something that we touched on a little bit about is, like, you know, you're not just doing one thing. You're not, like, you know, you have music out, you uh, have wonderful looks, you get costumes made, you do hair, like, specifically on the show it's like there's so many things you have to be good at you have to be good at comedy music and it's like such a such a hard profession when you look at it that way but of course you know you're gonna have some fun on a Friday yeah exactly yeah definitely um I guess let's see if we have any more questions it looks like I'm gonna just wait a couple more minutes for questions to come in um, because I want to make sure that, you know, people watching this video can ask you questions. You know, I feel yeah. like I've been chatting a lot. So, you know, it's great that other people can kind of get their thoughts in a little bit. Perfect. Uh, yeah. So we'll just wait a little bit, <laughs> model, model a little bit, I guess. I'm sitting you know, next to my AC and my hair is yeah. just kind of 
bit. Yeah, I guess we'll just give it another minute. But in the meantime, I'm so curious about, you know, uh, right now it's pride or, you know, pride is so different this year because of the pandemic. And so uh, how are you celebrating pride? What are you doing? You know, how does how is pride this year different than last year? Or like, how is how is your pride basically? Pride was pride last year. You know, as as entertainers, as public figures, we we uh, keep an image where it's like everything's great. It's just a bit different this year, but it's still good. Pride last year fucking sucked. It was so boring. I hated it. There was no work. It was like the worst thing ever. Yeah, this definitely. Year, like I hated online drag for a long time, but this year I'm real busy and I can be a gorgeous goddess in my apartment, sitting here with my outfit, wig, uh, earrings, makeup sweatpants and slides on and so mm-hmm. I'm like really enjoying pride this year and then also like there was people there were people um out in a boat uh all weekend so that was nice it was really nice to see like now we're all being vaccinated and it's a bit safer to go out so mm-hmm. um church street in Toronto was really busy and it was just nice to be with people and uh, yeah I got to see my sisters. And, and, That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, that was happening a little bit in Alberta too. So it's so nice that, you know, we didn't get a full prize celebratoriness, but we were able to celebrate a little bit and things are changing. Uh, so we have another two questions in the chat. Uh, did you always consider yourself an artist or performer? Performer. Did you get any training from other queens or house mothers? So, uh, yeah. No, I, I kind of just jumped into it. Mm-hmm. I really just jumped into it. I've always been, uh, I've always been like a big personality and I, I don't really have any training to be honest with you. Um, but like practice, like you, maybe you don't have training, but you've done this for seven years. So of course you're going to be excellent at it. You know, it does, it, it always oh. takes time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely. And I guess another question is, what advice would you give to your younger self? So pretend I'm holding up a picture of you as a kid. Like, what kind of advice do you give for a younger self embarking on this creative journey? Like, don't be afraid uh, to just be out there. Don't hold yourself back. Be unapologetically you. Because when you do that, people love you for you. And that's when you make the biggest difference. Yeah, definitely. That's amazing. Uh, I guess... If there's no more questions in the chat, I'm going to ask one more question. Oh, one more just came in. Sorry. People are really now starting to ask questions. Uh, Do you have a favorite drag that you have worn? A favorite outfit? Yeah, maybe like a favorite look. Probably my finale gown. It's like completely encrusted in rhinestones. I wore it on the finale of Drag Race. I looked absolutely stunning. Uh, Yeah, that one. Okay, awesome. Well, I'll have to look that up. That sounds beautiful. And then how do you deal with creative burnout? Like, you know, just burnout in general. I don't know. I just kind of ride it. I I don't like, I've had a lot of creative burnout this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just got to ride it. I just work on myself because like, I love doing drag and drag is my life. It's my job. It's my money maker. It's like Mm -hmm. on on the table. But like, if it's not making me happy, then I'm just chilling for a bit. Yeah, I think that's so important for like all artists to hear. It's like, if it's not making you happy, take a break. You know, like, I think there's this big kind of effort on productivity, especially during the pandemic. And, you know, it gets tiring. It's a pandemic. You can take a break. You can be relaxed once in a while. You don't always have to hustle. So I guess my very last question is, What's next for you? What's on the horizon? What's on the horizon? Um, I'm finally retouring. I'm really excited to be performing live. I'm in Calgary uh, next week. That's very close to us. Oh my goodness. That's amazing. I'm in Calgary at Twisted Element next weekend. I went to the ninth time there. Um, So that's going to be fun. Uh, We're going on tour in October. And I have some other fun projects that I can't talk about yet, but we're going to be seeing a lot of projects. Okay, great. And if you're ever in Edmonton, we'll have to have a tea or something or spill the tea together. Okay. And where can people find you? Are you on social media? Yeah, you can find me on Instagram at Boa the Drag Queen, on Twitter at Bitch on Arrival. Uh, I'm on YouTube, Backpage, XTube, Craigslist. Um, Okay, everywhere. 
Awesome. Well, it's been such an absolute pleasure talking to you, Boa, talking a little bit about creativity, giving people a better understanding about all the work that it takes to be a drag queen and like, you know, all the influences that you have. So it's been such a pleasure. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. It's nice to see you. Yeah, super nice to see you. I guess, you know what, let's sign off there. We have a little bit of a survey for people if they want to tell us what they liked about this program or what we can improve. So uh, the survey will be popped up in the chat and after we close this talk. So without further ado, uh, thank you so much for attending and checking out this. Thank you for to Helen, who's our digital programs assistant on the other end of this call, helping us and uh, have a good rest of your pride. Thanks. Okay, bye for now. Bye.